He is the CEO of Barbell. Please welcome to the stage, rise and welcome to the stage, AJ Roberts. I need, I need to just package her up and take her everywhere, that intro. Um, so I was, I was originally scheduled to speak tomorrow, and uh, I am not a professional speaker. And I do speak, but I'm not a professional speaker. And none of my presentations are ever um, canned, they're never repeated. Um, and the reason for that is, is that I truly believe that every moment we have in life is where we're supposed to be at that specific time. And because of that, every moment is individual, unique, and different. And so I tend to like to get a feel for the room, feel the energy, interact with people, really start to understand the people I'm standing in front of so I can present something that is going to really impact and change your life in that moment. Of course, today I show up. I'm here for five minutes. Kelly asked if I will speak. And I said, I'm ready. And so what's going to come through me today is, is not prepared. Um, I don't know where it will lead us. And uh, I hope that you get something out of it. All I ask is two things. Number one is I just have your undivided attention. Uh, I tend to say things that are powerful, and I don't want you to miss that. You paid a lot of money to be here, so if you have a laptop, cell phone, feel free to take pictures. I'm pretty photogenic. Um, <laughs> but uh, don't be texting, and face, save Facebook for the end. And then at the end, of course, if you, if you got something out of what I shared with you today, I would love if you could share that on my Facebook um, and, and share, you know, with people who, who weren't able to make it. There's so many people that wanted to come to, to experience this, to be a part of it. You guys are unique and different, and I say that, and, and I honor you for that. One of the things in business and life that, that we are constantly told is that we are not normal, that we are not the same as everybody else, that we need to slow down, that we need to get with the rest of the pack and not be so enthusiastic, not be so excitable, not be so driven, right? That it's not okay to go 110% all the time. And I'm here to tell you that it is, right? You are amongst a room of people that are constantly made to feel different. These are your people. We are normal. And there is nothing wrong with who you are. And what happens in life is we are told so many times through the media, through our friends, through our family, that it's not okay to be you. And so we're in this battle and we're torn back and forth, back and forth. And you're trying to figure out, who the hell am I? Why am I here if I'm supposed to just be this, this person that participates in society? For me... I went all in from a young age. I was running by the age of eight months. All the other kids were still crawling. All the parents thought it was great. Oh, AJ's running around. Says to my mom, Carrie, you must be so proud. My mom said, you try to keep up with him. Right? Learned to swim. I just dove in the deep end. Freaked everyone out. But I went all in. 16 years of age. I said, you know what? I was playing basketball. Played for England. I said, professional sports in England, there's no basketball. I'm going to America. 16 years. Packed my bags up, moved to America. Left everyone and everything I knew behind. I went all in. Then I got banned from playing sports for recruitment reasons or whatever. I said, you know what? I'm going to find something I can do. And that's what led me into powerlifting. Found I was pretty strong, picking things up. Grew up watching superheroes. Always thought I'd want to be one. Always like the Incredible Hulk. So I turned myself into a real-life superhero. Strongest man in the world. You know what? That wasn't enough. So then I said, I'm fat, I'm sick, I'm dying here. I might be the strongest in the world, but I need to get myself in check. Two years later, step on stage, lost 100 pounds, competed in a bodybuilding show. But the thing is, along the way, it's not all roses and rainbows. It's not all unicorns and fairies. And because of that, we start to feel as if maybe we should just be normal. Maybe 
We should just be okay with being average. For many of you in here, it's probably maybe I should just be a wife, just be a mother. Maybe I shouldn't be ambitious. Maybe I shouldn't travel so much. Maybe I should be there and support everyone else. So I figured maybe I should try to be normal. So for the last year or so, I've been going through this battle. Being AJ that everybody knows. And then trying to be this normal AJ. Trying to be a good partner. Trying to not travel so much. Trying to go to bed on time. Get eight hours of sleep like all the experts say are good. You know what I realized? Average fucking sucks. <laughs> Everyone else can have average. That's theirs. They can take it. They can run with it. They can hold their ceilings low. Because I'm going to go play when nobody else wants to play. Right? I'm going to go show up when no one else is willing to show up. You know why? Because if I don't, who the hell will? Who's going to be that next person that changes the world? You know, I, I grew up thinking, like I said, I want to be a superhero. I gotta take this off, I'm getting hot. I want to be a superhero. What's one of the things of superheroes? Apart from the strength, they never die, right? You're invincible. What a great thought process. But we can be, right? Our life is limited, but our legacy can live on forever. So the choice you have to make is, do I want to own who I am and be proud of that person and live forever and change the world? Do I want to go over here with everybody else, make everybody else happy, and just live, but really be dead, waiting to die? I don't think anyone in here I don't think you'd be here if that's what you wanted to do, right? So I've realized there's really three things that allow us to stay the course and achieve the greatness that we know is within us. I don't need to inspire you or motivate you. You already know that person inside, who that person is. That's your core person. You may not look the way you want to be, you may not have the money you want to have. You may not be in the relationship you want to be in. And you may not be connected spiritually the way you want to be. But that don't mean that person is not there. That does not mean that person is not inside of you. That sexy, beautiful, powerful person, they are there. Whether you look the way you want to look, whether you feel the way you want to feel, they're there. That person who run the million dollar business, the, the eight-figure business, to go to a hundred million, to sell for a billion. By the way, there's no real billion-dollar businesses anymore. They were just paper trails. So, um, <laughs> but but what, no matter what you want, you know that person's already inside of you, right? So you get what you want. You get what you got because of who you are. But who you need to be to get what you want is already inside of you. You don't have to change. You don't have to be a different person. You just have to show up as the person you know you truly are. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have your definitive purpose. You have to know what your calling is. You have to tune into that. You guys are not going to find it by listening to anyone on this stage. You're going to find it by listening to that voice that speaks to you every day. That voice that is nagging you while the rest of the world is telling you you're not normal. That voice is telling you to go play with those weird kids. <laughs> to go play with those special people. Those people who have to take medication to be normal. Think about that. You have to drug yourself up so you're not hyperactive, you're not short attention span, that you can participate with the rest of the world. Hmm. So definitive purpose. Kelly asked a question. Ah, she said, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Who didn't have an answer? 
Raise your hand if you didn't write anything down. So all of you know what you need to do. What you wrote down is what you need to do. Who's not doing that? Raise your hand if you're not doing what you wrote down. So all you need to do is write down, what am I going to do? What am I doing now? And figure out how to stop doing what you're doing now. And it really is that simple. What holds you back is the need to own what you are currently doing. Because your identity is attached to the person you are currently showing up as. I was 330 pounds as powerlifter, world's strongest man. Walked in a room, commanded presence just by my appearance. Scared little kids until they got to know me, realized I was a big cuddly bear. But little kids would look and point. I remember walking with my mom through a concert, uh, in, a, in, a, in an open park concert, outdoor concert. The little kids like pointing at me. I said to my mom, why is that kid pointing at me? And I says, you're 330 pounds. No one in England looks, walks like looks like you. He's probably never seen anything like it. I go, oh, okay. And I noticed that was repetitive. People were afraid to approach me and all this stuff. My identity, though, was attached to being a powerlifter. I moved to Columbus, Ohio. I trained at the world's strongest gym. I traveled the world presenting powerlifting, con you know, powerlifting concepts. But I knew that wasn't who I was. When I closed my eyes and thought about my future, powerlifting was never in the vision. Being a powerlifter was never there. So I realized I had to get away from all of that. And I did. I upped and moved. I moved to California. I implanted myself in an environment of entrepreneurs, fitness, you know, get around the people you're supposed to be around. And that's where you guys are here. You're here. This is a group of people, a community, a tribe, however you want to say, of people who believe in you. And that's a, that's a unique situation, right? So you need to get around those people as much as possible, do whatever it takes to be in the same room as these people as often as you can, and stick to your, divinity, your, your, your purpose. Stick to what it is you're called to do. What takes you off that, that's the second point today, is what's called drifting. Y'all, well, most of y'all are women and some powerful men. And there's one thing that the world has convinced women that they can do, and that's multitask. Despite all of the books written that say multitasking is complete bullshit, if I'm a woman, I can multitask. Now, granted, y'all women have much better handle on stress than men, and so you can juggle multiple stuff without the overwhelm that it comes to a man. We're focused. Right? We're working. You interrupt us. Now we can't work anymore. <laughs> Why are you interrupting? I was, I got to go for a walk. I got to try to get my head back. <laughs> you women, you working, someone says something, you stop, turn around, go right back to it. So it's not a case of being able to multitask. It's just a case of being able to handle the stress that comes from it. But how many of you are juggling projects that you shouldn't be juggling? How many of you are wives and mothers? And what comes with that? A list of responsibilities that people say that you should be doing. You don't need to be doing any cooking. You don't need to be doing any cleaning, any washing, any chores. You can hire people for that. And if you're the breadwinner, your husband doesn't need to be doing that either. Because you will crush his bulls so quick, there will be no <laughs> masculine energy in the relationship. You'll be showing up as the, the man, the female, and your husband's going to be there doing the dish, being like, I'm a happy stay-at-home guy. And he's not. He's dead inside because he don't have no ownership in the relationship. So outsource that stuff. All the stuff you shouldn't be doing, write that list. What do I need to do? What do I do now? And then just start hiring, outsourcing, hiring, outsourcing. Richard Branson he said, I had the, had, had the pleasure of, of be, going to Necker, spending time with Richard. Um, one of the things he said, the reason he's so successful is just he fired himself as quickly as possible. <laughs> if 
Find someone else to be doing all the things that you don't want to do. That doesn't mean you don't hustle, don't grind. It doesn't mean you're sitting on the beach just relaxing. But it means you don't do the things you're not meant to do. And drifting, drifting is what gets us. Beyond that, if we're not tied up in, in other jobs or other uh, opportunities or things we believe we should be doing because that's what a good person does, we find ourselves on our cell phones, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the other apps that are out there. We find ourselves watching Netflix and binge-watching series shows. We find ourselves having conversations with people that are just negative conversations, watching the news, doing all these things that distract us from our calling. And if you think of it in the terms of energy, you are powerful, powerful people. And everything that you allow into your life that takes a piece of that energy drains your overall resource. Right? So you need to protect your energy to the highest degree. Don't let nobody or nothing take that from you. Because if you're letting someone take that from you, and it isn't leading you towards your cooling, then you are not going to be happy. And this internal battle and frustration, and, and you know, you all are successful people. In fact, you're here, you can afford to be here, that means you're successful. I don't care what you had to do to get here, it means you're successful. Most people out there are, are trying to get to the level you're at, and you're already there. But that feeling inside of you of not being successful, that's because you're not living your calling. You're not doing the things you're supposed to do. You're drifting. You're being sucked in all these places you don't want to go. So you gotta, you got to manage your time. And it's not about, you know, being like so rigid you can't have the flexibility. But it's about protecting your time. We're only here for a limited amount. I have a friend who passed. His name was Jordan Guernsey. And he, uh, he, he had cancer of the lymph nodes. And um, he had built a really successful business, did a lot in his community. And I got the pleasure to learn from him. And in his last few years, you know, he, he was able to really reflect on life. And he said something so powerful that I want to share it with you. He said, the difference between you and me is that the doctor gave me a number. And you're living your life like it's never going to end. And that made me stop and realize, if I die today, if I live my purpose, if I live my calling, am I passing something on that will be echoed in eternity? Or am I waiting for tomorrow? Am I putting it off because of some story I've created that I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't know this person, I don't have the money? It's never, what, it's never the resources. It's never external. It's always... You. So when you can claim that ownership and say, I am responsible for why I am not doing what I wrote down on this piece of paper, the game changes. Because now, you don't have to worry about anyone else. You don't need anything else. You got everything you need. And you just have to live. And do that every single day. That's it. It's easy to say, You'll drift, but, but you go, oh, I'm in my third episode of Orange is Black. I probably should turn off the damn Netflix. <laughs> right? So it's, and, and, then, and it's not about the guilt or the shame around that. It's not about, you know, sitting there and going, oh, what am I doing and beating yourself up. It's just a case of turning that TV off and going right back to what you should be doing. It's one thing with, 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 with food. And you know, obviously, my relationship with food, I've 
had a good relationship, had a bad relationship, a good relationship, bad relationship. The thing with food is, is that you can eat something bad, and tomorrow you can just eat good. And the next day eat good, and the next day eat good, and before you know it, you're where you want to be. The other day, I was hiking with Jenny. Jenny's my partner. And she says to me, my first time up this hill, I got about three quarters of a mile, turn around, walk back down. And I said, oh, I'm not going to stop. We get to about the three quarter of a mile mark, my legs are burning, my shins are on fire, I'm sweating. And I, I stood there and I'm like, I'm done. Screw this. I'm going to turn back around. Like, you know, I know she'll come with me, no big deal, whatever. She's supportive like that. And then I realized that that's what I've been doing for this last year or so, being normal, turning around when things got tough. And I got angry. I got pissed off. And I went into this place that I call the void. And in that moment, I just took one step and another step and another step. And all of a sudden, I picked up the pace. I was silent. Jenny says to me, Hey, why are you going so fast? But I stopped looking at the top of the mountain. I stopped looking at where I wanted to go. And I just focused on that next step and that next step. So you know what you're supposed to do. You don't have to worry about focusing on that. You have to worry on focus on what do I have to do for the next step. When you have that list of things you're doing, you're not supposed to be doing, you can start just working through that next step. And before long, all that time, all that energy, all that freedom is now focused on what it is you're called to do. So, we covered definitive purpose. Know your calling. And it, it will change. And you have to be okay with it changing. I came to the States to play basketball. It was 170 pounds. And I got into powerlifting, it was 330 pounds. And I got into bodybuilding and dropped 100 pounds. You know, and, and now all I want to do is just make sure I, I live a long enough time that when I pass that I was able to help and change people's lives in the way I want to do that. So you go, you, your, your cooling may change. You have to be okay with that. You have to shed the identity. You have to become... Chameleon. After you'll be okay with leaving people and places behind. You know? They got to get on your train or find the road. They got to step their game up. And there's people out there that will help you do that. If you're in relationships, you love the person you're with, and they don't want to step it up, there's people who can help you. And if that person still doesn't want to step it up, do you want to spend the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years dead just to make them happy? Do you want to hold your voice back from the world to make one person happy? There comes a point in time you have to draw that line in the sand and say, I'm on this side. You can either step over or I'm going to go on without you. Business relationships. I'm not just talking about partners here, business relationships as well. Are the people around you, you know, moving in the direction you want to go? Everyone hires really fast. No one wants to fire anyone. Get into business relationships. A year later, it's not what you want. I was just staying in this business relationship. And you can just end it like that. There is really not that much to it. I had a partnership in an eight-figure software company. They didn't like people. They didn't want to interact with people. They didn't want to talk to people. They didn't want to deal with customers. They just want to sell, 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 sell. Peace out. Here's my ownership. I don't want any of this. I am going the other way. I love people. I need to be around people. I need to interact with people. I don't want to sit in an office and hide because we don't want to face the people. Done. Out. Most people wait a year, two years, three years, four years. Finally, they get to the point where I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> and then they jump. You don't have to get to that break point. You don't have to wait until it's so painful and so deep. 
that is, that is messy. Am I doing what I'm called to do or am I not? Yes or no? Yes or no? That's it. The last component on all of this is understanding that in order to show up at that person that is inside of you, you have to learn how to become that person. It's a really good saying, good or bad, I don't, don't, don't really have an opinion on it, but it's fake it till you make it. And everyone, some people think, yep, and other people, ooh. But here's the thing. Inside of me, the person I'm supposed to be, 200-pound man. Doctors would say even lighter, but based on testing, I wouldn't be able to go any lighter than about 200 pounds. I'm 260. If I act as if I'm 200 pounds, what does a 200-pound man eat? What does a 200 man do to maintain a 200 pound figure? If I act as if that person, before long, I'll be that person. Is that faking it? Or is that being the person you truly are? So to the world, they might see you as faking it till you're making it, but you're really just showing up as who you are. So you have to figure out in the body, in business, in relationships, who is it you need to show up as and then just show up as that person. What qualities does that person have? You know, if you're, if you're short-tempered, right? Because you've been busting your ass, cleaning the house, taking care of the kids, and you want something done, doesn't get done, you just lose it. Because of everything else is building up, you lose it in that moment. Does the person you need to be, do they lose it? They have emotional mastery. So, how do I deal with that issue? What shows up? What's the, what's the ugly side of me that I need to leave behind? What's, that? What, what, what's my qualities that I don't want to take on this ride with me? And you slowly learn to deal with that. It's never about business. It's never about relationships. It's never about the, the body, your health. It's, it's, it's all about what's inside of you. And when you show up as that person that you already know, as, that, as you show up in your cooling of who it is you know you're supposed to be, you'll have the body you want. You'll attract the relationships you want. You'll have the business that you want. And no one will be able to stop you. You'll be so damn powerful that you radiate. And no one will come within proximity of you <laughs> who isn't ready to battle that power. You'll be able to command a room. You'll be able to step into a conversation, a strategic conversation, and get what you deserve. You won't play small because you know you're who you are. You know you're showing up as that person. Right now, you, the, the reason you struggle, the reason you question, the reason you're unsure, the reason you're searching, because you're just not showing up as the person you truly are. So figure out what your calling is, what your purpose is. Connect to your higher power, your source. You sit in prayer every day. I, I, I meditate. Twice a day. Some people will pray twice a day. Some people just connect with nature twice a day. Create space for silence and go internal. Dig into your calling. Commit to that calling. When someone shows up and says, Hey, I got an opportunity, you can say, Does it meet my calling or does it? Distract me from my calling. Yes or no? It's an easy, easy measure. If it supports you, bring, let's go.
And if it distracts you, no thank you. Get a handle, get a grip on your time. Where are you spending your time? What's pulling you away from what it is that you're called to do? Slowly, one by one, eliminate that distraction. Eliminate that relationship if it's, if it's not uh, if a close friend or family. You can work on the relationship if it is. Um, but eliminate that, eliminate that relationship. Cancel the cable subscription. Get rid of the TV. Take the food out of the house. (laughs) Eliminate those distractions. The last component in all of this, and and the truth of the matter is, we're all human. And by that, we're all going to screw it up. We're all going to slip. We're all going to drift. We're all going to have moments in the darkness where we can't see the light. So find somebody who's going to ruthlessly hold you accountable. I have never achieved a single thing in my life without a coach. When I learned to walk, My mom was there to hold me up one step in front of the other. When I learned to swim, my parents had taken me to swim lessons. When I played basketball, I had a coach. When I powerlifted, I had a coach. In business, I've had coaches and mentors. I put myself in rooms with the most successful people and just observed, who are these people? One of the biggest things I realized is, ah, they're all screwed up. (laughs) I'm off the hook. We're all a bunch of misfits. But find someone who's going to hold you ruthlessly accountable, who's going to cool you out on your shit. You don't need a pat on the back for all the good things you do. You're supposed to do those things. (laughs) Find someone who's going to point out what you're not doing, how you're not showing up, what you're not doing that you said you would do. Because that's all it is. You probably could write a list of to-dos right now, things you were supposed to do before you came here that you didn't do. But half of that list is probably stuff you shouldn't be doing. The other half of that stuff is probably stuff you're not ready to be doing. I believe procrastination or laziness or the reason everyone says you're not where you want to be is purely because what you're trying to do is not what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> if it was, you'd just freaking do it. Think about it. Anything you've wanted to do, done. Anything you procrastinated on, not done. Don't want to do it, but think I should. You don't have to do all this alone. Find that person to hold you accountable. Build a team around you of people who make up for your weaknesses. You might, need, you might need a coach in every area of your life, and that's okay. You might need a trainer who will come to your house and get you out of bed if you can't even make it to the gym. You might need a chef who shows up, or you might just need a food delivery service. The way the world's changing, you're not going to have to go anywhere. You get everything you want right there. You don't have to go shopping. You don't have to waste anything. Some of y'all will probably love shopping. Personally, it's a nightmare. <laughs> but I still go and then get frustrated, come home, order online. Um, <laughs> but, but even from going to the grocery store, right? You can just order straight to your house now. You don't need to go to the grocery store. Fat, fast on your, you can have an assistant do that. You can do it yourself. There's so many ways you can, can get your time back, Right? The little things that we think are important, they really are not important. So find a coach, find a group of coaches, someone to hold you accountable in each area. Because it's great if you've got a business coach and your business is rocking. But if you're going home and eating McDonald's on the way because you just don't have time to cook, then that business, that's going to end at some point because you're going to have a heart attack. 
and they're going to have to end up spending all that time to get healthy, and then the business is just going to crumble as that happens. Or you'll self-sabotage the business because, you know, you know your health is so out of whack that you need to take time away, so you'll start working out and doing all the stuff to get healthy, but then the business is drawn from the business. <clears throat> Finish on this. One of the things that, that people talk about is balance. And uh, I'm here to tell you that it's not about balance, right? You ain't going to spend the same amount of t- time each day on each area of your life. What it is, though, what it what's truly is, is about being a have-it-all. And that comes from living your calling every single day. When you do that, and only that, all the problems, they go away. It's in those moments that you feel alive. It's in those moments you're unstoppable. It's in those moments the momentum is out of control. And you look around and you say, how is this happening? Why are these people showing up in my life? Why am I so blessed? You start looking around as if this, this isn't normal. I, sh- I don't deserve this. So then you get off of the cooling train, you go back over to the confusion train, do 10 projects you're not supposed to do, and then you go, what the heck is going on here? Or maybe I should just go back over here. Oh, everything's good. We're in flow. Everything's easy, effortless. All this stuff that, you know, the woo-woo people talk about, you know, it just, it just comes to me. The ideas, well, I don't like that. I'm going to go back over here. Whew. I knew it was supposed to be hard work. I'm supposed to get my knees bloody. My elbow's sweaty. Step into, the, step into the light. Step into your cooling. Be aware of everything that's over there. All of the things you do that pull you from what you're supposed to do. Shine, shine your light on that and say, I ain't going back over there. And use that to fuel you. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be normal. If you find yourself being normal, you're probably in the, in the wrong area, the wrong zone. So, I'm glad I'm a bunch of, um, uh, repeat that. (laughs) I'm glad I'm amongst a bunch of fellow misfits. The only thing I ask, like I said at the beginning, is that if you have been inspired today in any way, shape, or form, that you share that publicly. Why? Because there's no point keeping your voice hidden inside. I'm going to screw this quote up, but Osho said, that when, we, when we are torn between different paths, that's true evil. But when we are walking along one path, that's when we can sing, we can dance, and we can truly experience joy. So I encourage you to walk that path, to step into your calling. Do not let another day, minute, go by. Do whatever it takes. Commit 100%, even if it's uncomfortable right now. Because the world needs you. You are the game changers. You are the different makers. You are the people that don't fit in. And that's beautiful. And that's powerful. And that's what lights me up to know that there's a bunch of us out there United in our weirdness. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening. I'll be be here today and tomorrow.